Hello and welcome. It is time for Cisco Live. The broadcast session starts now. I can even hear myself on the big speakers. That is amazing. This is awesome to be here in person. My name is Rob Boyd. Let me introduce my co-host, the incredible Lauren White. Hello. Hello, Rob. It's such an honor to be here with you again. Oh. This is our second time together, but this time in person. Physical. Physically. Well, let me get this thing started. The, uh, the, the show, is, it's evolved, right? This is all about meeting the digital audience, that's you guys, with the physical audience that's here, but there should be no trade-off in your experience. This is all about bringing the education, bringing the entire experience to you. We're all learning, we're all growing, we're trying to move as fast as we can, and there's so much great information here that you're going to be able to apply directly to whatever your challenges may be, and if not, there are lots of very smart people that you can ask questions of from and learn more from. So with that, I want to uh, go through a little bit and uh, set some, um, let's set some stuff here. Lauren, I'm curious, you are a Cisco veteran yourself. You yeah. and I met as part of hosting, but it started virtually. What's been your Cisco experience and where do you come from? What do you do for Cisco? Well, I am currently a systems engineering manager in the global enterprise segment here at Cisco. Okay. And I have an amazing rock star team of engineers that support the largest companies in Chicago. Now when I met you, were you an engineer or I mean, a manager? Yes. Because you were a hands-on engineer in the field, but now you're managing the engineers for that for that uh, sales team. That is exactly, yeah. okay. you got a good memory, Rob. Oh, well, you're worth <laughs> that remembering. Is exactly what it is. And I've actually been here eight and a half years. See, that's the part, because I feel like, I mean, that's, that's respectable. Because if you're doing stuff, you're moving up. What kind of things have you been, you're in Chicago. That's, yes. a, that's a tough market. I've met a lot of good salespeople and engineers from Chicago, because the customers are demanding. You've got some of the biggest customers in the world there. But you've been doing that, now you're hosting with us. What do you like better? You know what, I love my team. So I gotta, I love my team. Enterprise is where it's at. I yep. love Cisco, I love my customers. <laughs> But I do also love the fact that I'm back home in Chicago. It's my favorite place in the world. Oh, if you guys don't know, I am a Chicago person. Uh, <laughs> and I've really been blessed to be able to work for a company that I've had multiple amazing leaders that have helped me get to where I am and be able to help go give back, right? I'm from Chicago. I went to Chicago public schools. So I'm always invested in helping see the next generation of engineers yeah, kind of absolutely. take off and rocket ship, right? I'm going to be asking you more questions about this as we move forward. I want to let everybody know that, of course, we want you to interact with us, and the easiest way to do that, of course, is to follow the hashtag Cisco Live. You can follow it, we want you to contribute to it. If you're physically here, you're probably not listening to this, but it, just in case, uh, either no matter what your involvement is, please start right now by saying something about how much you're enjoying the broadcast, how great it is to have Lauren hosting the broadcast, and how much you're looking forward to meeting two other hosts that we've got coming up in just a moment. Because we're not doing it by ourselves, not to mention the hundreds of people behind the scenes with us. It takes a village in more ways than one. And this entire week, throughout the entire event, but especially today, we're going to introduce you to all the different areas here. We're going to feed you information about some upcoming keynotes. We're going to hear from Chuck, the day one opening keynote. Technically, that's tomorrow. But we got so much material coming up, you're going to love it. A lot of stuff on sustainability initiatives that we're going to be talking about in just a moment with uh, Alok Sharma. is our one of our very special guests coming up. Uh, let's see, what else do we have coming up? Do you remember some of the other things? We have a, a digital showcase that you guys can oh, be accessing you. right now. We'll get back to it, we won't let you forget, but there's a lot of stuff that you can be doing in your breaks when you get some time. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> and I want to go out to our host on the floor that we haven't met yet, but she's a veteran, you probably know her. Annie, are you, uh, are you picking us up out there? Can you hear me? I hear you, Rob. I'm coming at you live from the World of Solutions show floor. I'm over here in Town Square 4, pedaling my heart out. We've got so <laughs> much going on behind me. We've got the social media hub, as you mentioned, Cisco Live, hashtag Cisco Live, and you can get onto our media wall over there. We've got behind me, we've got the fastest autonomous driving Indy car going 192.2 miles per hour. I'm dying after just going maybe like 0.2 miles per hour. <sighs> I'm gonna walk over here. Look at these really lovely ladies. <laughs> like, tell me, tell me your names, where you're from. Um, I'm Hannah Smith, I'm from San Diego. And I'm Molly Pinkney and I'm from Austin, Texas. So I can't help but notice these lovely t-shirts you guys are wearing. It says Cisco Insider. Hannah, tell me a little bit more about Cisco Insider. Yeah, um, Cisco Insider is an umbrella program for Cisco's customer advocacy, loyalty, and research groups. Um, right now we have four tracks. We have user group, we have customer advocates, um, we have uh, user research, and we have um, champions. 
Fantastic. And Molly, I can tell by the tag on your badge there, you're with the user group. Can you tell me a little bit more about the Yeah, absolutely. Our user group is a, an online program where 30,000 of our customers and partners, all under NDA, have exclusive access to our product teams. They can engage online with our product teams. Um, at places like Cisco Live, they're able to attend exclusive roadmap sessions and technical briefings and learn a little bit more about Cisco on a very exclusive level, and then they can join our beta programs as well. Oh, well, thanks so much, ladies. I, I hear this is your first Cisco Live ever, right? Yeah, first time <laughs> ever. Super <laughs> exciting. So there's so much here to do on the show floor alone, but there's also mm -hmm. sessions that are there. The attendees can, you can also join us online. There's all of this that's going on on the other side of this this town square here, you'll see this is a registration. You have folks that are coming back to do certifications. They can do renew their certifications here. You can also do them online. A little bit later in the, the program, you're going to see the capture the flag. We've got, this is just one, this is actually town square four. This is one of like seven different town squares that people can meet, get together. In some cases, a lot of these people, this is the first time that we're getting out to see the rest of the Cisco Live community in maybe even three or four years. I know for me, this is the first time I've seen a lot of my colleagues in over three years. Uh, if you can see over here, we got some checkers. We got these awesome chairs over here. Uh, if I could actually sit down, that would be amazing after that pedaling over there. Um, over here on the back side of this wall, we've got the DevNet zone. A little bit further over the side, we have the technical solutions clinic where you can meet engineers. And then on the furthest side over back on the furthest, furthest side, you're going to see a bunch of our partner pavilions. There's a Cisco merchandise store. There's just so much going on here. So why don't you take a walk with me? We can show you what's going on here. You'll notice that we've got just a lot of energy going on on the floor today. Like I said, it's the first event of a lot of us has just been coming out since basically maybe two or three years. But like I said, online too, we have all of this great content. And later on in the program, you're going to see how you can interact with everyone else. We are asking everybody to go ahead and tweet us. You can also use the hashtag Cisco Live. Also on Instagram, you can follow us there. This broadcast is showing on Cisco.com, CiscoLive.com. We are live in Las Vegas. I'm going to keep going this way. I'm being told <laughs> we're going to walk this way. We have lots of folks who are here today. I think it's over 15,000 so far that have registered for the on-site. When many more of you that are joining us online, thank you for you that this is your first show. We do this every year. We're looking forward to seeing you come back real soon. And Rob, we're going to go back to you in studio. Can I ask you one question, Annie, before yes. you go? I just want to say, hats off, I respect the fact that you're willing to to ride a bike and then try to do your walk and talk. Because I can hear you breathe a little bit. You're probably the fittest member on the whole team. So I don't <laughs> think that's a problem, but it's like, that's brave. And now, and, you know, it's like. Well, I was just thinking it was just like 192.2 miles per hour autonomous driving car behind me to oh, Annie pedaling you on going a bicycle. Okay. It's sort of like the like polar opposite, but we've got a little bit of everything here on the show floor. Right, no, that's awesome. Thank you so much. We'll check back in with you in a little bit, shall we? Awesome. Talk to you later, Annie. All right, guys. Hey, I've got a new guest with me here. Uh, please welcome Ramesh Isaac. How are you doing, sir? Doing good. Thank you for having me. Now, you're on the NOC team. I can tell by your shirt, and I appreciate yes. anyone that wears things that remind me <laughs> what, who they are and what they do. We'll work on even adding more information later, perhaps some of my cheat notes. But uh, specifically, you work with FlexPod. Yes. Um, yes. But first, tell me your role. What, what, do, you, what do you do for, it's for Cisco. Uh, for no. NetApp, actually. We, you work, we are, oh, that's right. You work directly for NetApp. So, yeah. yeah, so FlexBot is the Cisco and NetApp partnership. Yep. Uh, it's been running for uh, since 2010, so almost as long as we've had a Cisco UCS yep. platform. I've watched lots of iterations of it, but yeah. Yes, yeah. Within, um, within this partnership, we create uh, validated reference architectures okay. of Cisco UCS compute and NetApp storage that are supported by uh, Cisco, Nexus, and MDS switching and now includes management within the InterSight platform. Gotcha, let me ask you a question about that. It's not exactly on our list, but sure, don't panic. Sure. But it's in general, when it comes to the value of what you guys are doing with FlexPod, I feel like you are solving in it. When you talk about validated designs, I always think about the fact that's engineers who are saying, here's a real world environment in which these are solutions you're going to need, and we are going to pre-configure them so that 
you don't make maybe some mistakes that you might normally make or have headaches you wouldn't normally have or not get as much value. Can you explain to me what the value is of using a reference architecture in a FlexPod like environment? So um, to go uh, a little bit into what I was going to talk about earlier, we, we create these designs with the best practices of, of how you want to put these in place. And they're reference architectures. Um, so you, they can be very prescriptive, yeah. but you can adjust them to your to It's your, a starting point a lot of times. It's a starting right? point, okay. okay? So uh, I like to say it's, it's a little bit of us reading the fantastic manual so you don't have to. Yeah. Um, well, maybe at least a, a, an, an aggregate view of, of it. Yeah, I mean, it's a lab, but I mean, you still get, you guys are testing it though, and you test with yes. applications. You test we with test the with common things that are, how does it access the storage resources? Are they always available? Are they going to perform the way I do it? Because you want to get as close to plug and play in as many situations with expandable either a compute yes. or storage that is needed at a given moment, yes. right? Okay. Yes, so, so we're bringing in pieces of, uh, of Cisco and, and NetApp along with applications and, and third parties to some extent to make sure that integration and functionality is there as advertised. Yeah. And if it's not, we're feeding that back up into engineering to make sure that it does work. So tell me a little bit about that. You're working in the NOC, and so you can go beyond your technology as well, but give us a little insight into what the, for anyone that may not be familiar, the NOC is a network operations center. Physically, if you're here, it's right next door to us. But all of the networking, every vendor here, they're all connected because of what you guys are putting together in the team. You're providing these as a service, as a resource, and you're involved with that. Yes, yeah, so, so uh, there's certainly a lot of engineers doing a lot of different things. We are at the core of the data center, and what we're doing is we're bringing a, bringing a flex pod into that data center as a metro cluster design. So if you let me talk a little bit about that. In a flex pod, we build everything for resiliency. We have redundant connections between devices. We have uh, redundant controllers within the storage. We have redundant paths to the Cisco switches and fabric interconnects. But what, in bringing this to the NOC as a metro cluster, we're doubling down on that, putting in place the equivalent of two FlexPod data centers okay. that are capable of failing over to each other. And so what we have in that is we have all of the, uh, the, the network management uh, applications that are in use for running this show sitting in uh, our data center. Okay. Oh, not here. Here. Oh, but here. Okay, it's so here. you are running. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. But we're, it's, it's really it's an eating your own cooking kind of thing. Yes. Uh, as, I, as I would say as well. Yes. Uh, but what, what role specifically is FlexPod playing in this? What, carrying certain applications, certain, um, servicing up certain things? It's, so it's everything, it's every, everything as needed that okay. we might need to, to, to put in place. So okay. it, uh, it's it's all running over there in those in those racks. If you get a chance to stop by, no, I'm going to be back in there in a minute. That's actually uh -huh. one of my favorite because it's the reality. You guys yeah. know all the deep stories of what's yeah. going on, who's trying to do what. Yeah. You can see people coming in and out based on wireless connections. I'm going to run out and talk to out. Well, I'm not run. I'm going to stay right here, but I'm going to throw out to a guy in the field. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate right. everything on FlexPod. We'll stop by and talk about that in a little bit. Okay, guys, I want to check out. We've got another host. I want to introduce you to Alex joining our team for the first time this year, and I'm so glad to have him on the team. Uh, Alex, you're out on the show floor somewhere. What do you What do you got for us? Hey Rob, how's it going? My name is Alex, and yes, I am so stoked to be out here on the showroom floor and just at Cisco Live 2022. It's been a long time since I've been able to see all my friends and all their faces and interact with them, and I'm so stoked. It might be the three cups of coffee that I drink this morning, but I'm excited to be here. And I'm right now located over here at the Social Impact Zone. This is where attendees have the opportunities to give back to the local community of Las Vegas and all the different like educational uh, school zones that we have here within this district. There's exciting things going on here. There can, there's a lot of construction, there's drills and hammers all going off right behind me. And I was just chatting about the birds and the bees and where to house them with uh, Vanessa Portillo. Now she's the executive director over at Garden Farms Foundation. So Vanessa, my question for you is, what's the purpose of all this? What's the mission here? What are we trying to solve to? Yeah. So here in Las Vegas, um, we have a lot of food deserts, we have a lot of food insecurity, and so we are a company that empowers people to grow their own food here in the desert. Mm -hmm. um, and so through this partnership with Cisco Live, we're able to get garden beds, composting systems, educational kits to people who need it most. And we're able to teach kids and, and seniors everything in between about growing food and where healthy food comes from. Um, so we're able to kind of make this full circle connection with sustainability through it all. 
um, using systems like solar power boxes, mm -hmm. worm composting bins, um, local pollinator boxes. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so what exactly are folks building behind this? I see that we do have the, the beehive constructions over here. We had the bird houses. I see a lot of wires over here. So it looks like they're doing something with technology. So those folks who like to tinker with their hands and actually build something, we're actually building what? Solar yep. powered systems? Yes, so little tiny uh, so solar kits that we can use to um, charge small electronics like pumps for hydroponic systems, aerators, um, and to create systems that we can use outside mm -hmm. using water efficiency. Um, so, yeah, just using the sun, which we have right. plenty of here in Vegas. Yeah. So. That's much more impactful than when I thought about charging phones and tablets like that. You're like, no, this is charging pumps and actually making it easier to grow vegetables yes. here. This is perfect. And what about the, the beehives over here? And these are all the birdhouses? Yeah, so we've got some nesting boxes and, uh, and then also uh, bee boxes, which, yeah. you know, a lot of people don't think about when they, when they think about bees, but is, is solitary bees right. um, who live in these, who they nest in these boxes. They're small units of, of bee families, and they do a lot of the pollination. Um, you know, most of the pollination that happens with the honeybees, which is what people normally think about. Right, or think of the um, big beehive hanging mm -hmm. from the tree or something. They're confined to a specific area wherever okay. their hive is, where solitary bees, like what we're creating homes for, they're able to cover a wider area of space, do gotcha. a lot more pollination, and mm -hmm. they're really, really important to our food cycles here. Nice. And then what do folks need all the power drills located in this section over here? What do we need that for? So um, we're making over here composting beds yeah, and, and I can, garden Yeah, I can follow beds. you over there. Yeah, we can take absolutely. a look. Um, so, you know, using these really simple methods of building garden beds, yeah. um, we're using the same method for a bed to create a vermicomposting systems, which for one, cuts down on food waste, and then you're able to use that food waste to create a compost, which then enriches our soil. Right. And uh, then we're able to fertilize all of our plants and right. on this ongoing process to build our soil. Which is super important because we're in the desert here. Yes. So we're absolutely. trying to create some like rich soil for vegetables yes. to grow. Yep. Yep. A fully a fully closed circle. Um, so we'll be able to use some worms and um, create bins, teach people how to lower their impact on yeah. the landfill and also provide nutrients to their gardens for free. <laughs> awesome. So. Well, I, mean, I highly encourage folks who are here in person over here to come check out the World of Solutions. We're located, I believe, in Bayside C for those who might be watching and attending here in person. Come over, check it out. If you have some available time to be able to build some compost bins, build some raised garden bins, perhaps tinker and build a little solar powered charger, mm -hmm. birdhouses, there's so many opportunities for it. And so the fo for the folks online who are watching, um, from home and remotely all around the world, how can they get involved if they're not here in person? Yeah, so, um, you know, we are a nonprofit and we thrive off of community support and local donations. So um, you can find us at uh, gardenfarms.net and find ways to donate to uh, our programming, which includes not only growing food, but also healthy movement in the garden. We do art and music and nutritional education. Um, just to really try to get everyone's interest, whatever it may be, into that garden space. That's awesome. Do you hear that? All right, so all the folks at home watching this, get ready to get your hands dirty and jump in there and do something. You got this. Back to you guys, Rob. Awesome. Alex, I wonder if I could ask you one question before you disappear. Yeah, sure, uh, You can ahead. tell your guests thank you very much, but I just want to ask you something personal. Uh, and and I, it's about your hair, quite honestly. This is your first about show. My hair? Your hair has so much better lift than I'm able to get. I don't. Yeah, good. We got a good close-up oh, of this. Close this up. is impressive. This is. I don't know what your secret is, and if we have time to work on this, we're gonna. I cannot get that kind of lift, my man. You know, it takes about 30 minutes to do this, and I really want to make sure that I can ride the roller coaster at New York, New York after this. Uh -huh. It looks so like you there, did. Yeah. I, I think I'm gonna be able to make the high requirement. So luckily with oh, this. Oh, it's a high requirement. That's genius. <laughs> well done, Alex. Thank you. Welcome Thank you to the team. Much. Great interview. I appreciate your time. All no right, guys, problem. moving on. We are going to talk about uh, some more stuff and all the wonderful things going on. We're going to try and enlist it so that we are comprehensive. I'm turning to Lauren here as my co-host because she keeps me honest. But I know in this section, I want to talk a little bit about the digital showcase. And I believe the best way to think of the digital showcase is a contrast to the physical showcase. So if you can't be here or if you're just lazy and you're back in your hotel room, that's perfectly fine too. I, I don't judge. I'm right where with you. You can go to the digital showcase and you can, you can get information as you need. The on-demand library is constantly being filled in there. They're working hard, does not require registration. What else do we need to understand about that? What's your impression? 
So digital showcase, you caught a lot of the great things, okay. right? Rob, as always, I got your back though, like a chiropractor. So <laughs> don't forget guys to look also at the hybrid workspaces that are on there. So click around, request a demo if you want. Remember live experts will be there later in what we're calling connected learning. So the learning doesn't stop. It doesn't stop, does it Rob? No, it's, not at all, nor it's should it. There. It should not. Let's not forget, you know, we talk about, we've both been to, well, actually, let me ask you, how many Cisco Lives have you been to? So I've been to one physically, and this is my second, second. as a host. So one as a systems engineer. Oh, that's right, because we did the virtual, and yep, you were we my co-host, that's how we met. I don't I was, know if we should, I'll count that, I'll count that. Oh, no, we should absolutely count it. it. We worked hard. We did, no, we absolutely did. Not as hard as everybody else, but we still <laughs> <laughs> worked really hard. But I'm very glad to be here. But uh, hundreds of technical sessions available with the digital showcase. It, there's a resource of information. I use this kind of thing, this kind of thing for just-in-time learning quite a bit, because it is a lot to absorb at, mo at the moment. But I would say that, as you mentioned, the hybrid workspace, uh, work from anywhere. There's a, there's a very core message and some new things coming out that'll be announced at the keynote. Uh, you can get more details about those as they come out. But especially, I, it, it dawned on me, or it was told by me by Eric, our friend Eric Nip, that we're understanding the difference between remote work and hybrid work, yeah. and the and the digital showcase represents a lot of how that comes to be, and part of that is the fact that it's understanding work can happen from anywhere, we need to be able to uh, make it happen as efficiently as possible, and uh, WebEx is certainly a front, the face we see, but it's not the only part of the solution. The entire network comes into play, and there's a lot of options and choices that they show here and that they're making available in the showcase, yeah? Yes, yes, absolutely. And there's a ton of different learning, so like you said before. Yeah, tell us about the learning resources. Con if connected learning, I guess, yeah? Connected learning. There are videos on demand that will be available for you. There are just tech nuggets and labs that you should have access to, and there's something, I don't want to steal the thunder, but there's games like gamifying this whole experience called Capture the Flag. And you'll hear us talk to someone about that a little bit later on later today, yeah. but a lot of ways for you to continue that learning and, do and don't stop. Absolutely, you can get all of these resources, ciscolive.com forward slash global. That is your ticket to get in. Again, no registration. This is really about extending the learning opportunity to uh, work with the Cisco expert, get hands on. That includes DevNet workshops, it includes, I think it's, I think this is one of the games you're referring to. I'm probably, there's probably more. Ca capture the flag? <laughs> capture the flag, yes. Yeah, we're going to go You know, I have out. a competitive edge. This is, this is my competitive arm, guys. So when you see this shoulder go up. <laughs> you have it all in one arm. <laughs> the competition. Better watch out. I'll learning just about say my, that. Learning about my chiropractor. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, that is perfect. Well, guys, it's about that time that we need to check back on the show floor. We want to bring the energy to you, and that is exactly what our roaming hosts are doing, and thankful to them. They're still on their feet, whereas I get to sit down here. Annie, it looks like you've got the helm and the microphone there. Can you tell us a little bit about where you are and what you're up to? I'm over here at the WebEx Integration and Innovations Corner on the other side of the World of Solutions Showcase floor. I'm here with uh, my friend Brian Jones, the Chief Engineer at Lockheed Martin. We were talking earlier about work from anywhere. Where if you were working so far from the office as humanly possible from the office, about 240,000 miles away from Earth to be exact, could I still do that? Uh, it turns out, yes. Welcome to the Callisto Technology Demonstration. Uh, this is a joint effort between Lockheed Martin, Cisco, and Amazon to fly a payload aboard the Orion spacecraft on the Artemis One mission. Um, Artemis One is basically our return to the moon. Uh, the Orion spacecraft is designed for 1,000-day deep space exploration missions. This technology demonstration is designed to look at unique crew interface capabilities, um, technologies from all three companies, uh, demonstrate them to NASA and look at are these of value to astronauts as we basically continue our exploration of deep space. So from the Cisco perspective, um, we have their WebEx technologies integrated. Um, we have a mission uh, control center operational suite set up. Inside that operational suite, we're going to have DeskPro, uh, spacecraft connected Cisco WebEx board, uh, and virtual crew members are going to be invited in to interact with the technology demonstrator as it's going to the moon for this 42-day mission. And they can talk to Alexa is what I They heard. can as well, right. right. So basically through the Desk Pro and the audio system, we're going to teleport them, if you will, into the spacecraft. So through WebEx, they're going to be able to um, have their smiling, happy face uh, aboard the iPad that is running the WebEx software. And Cisco did a great job of implementing the latest audio video compression so we can fit it in the very small pipe that we have going into deep space. Uh, in addition to
into that, uh, Amazon has implemented their Alexa capability, uh, and that's done locally on board the device. Yeah. So it doesn't rely on the cloud. Uh, in addition to that, it has access to all the vehicle telemetry. So Orion is a very data-rich platform with over 100,000 different uh, data parameters, temperatures, pressures, et cetera. Yeah. And Alexa has access to all of those. So through WebEx, you'll be able to ask Alexa questions about you know, the temperature and pressure uh, aboard the spacecraft, for example, while you're working on other activities. That's incredible. Thank you so much, Brian, You're for welcome. sharing that with us. This is just one of many examples of how WebEx can be used in a way to integrate and innovate in different technologies. I'm going to walk over here. We've got so much demonstrations and data-rich environments that we're going on here. We're going to keep walking this way. I'm going to show you. Behind me here, we've got our integration with Ford, I believe. So this is the latest Ford electric vehicle. We've got WebEx integrated with CarPlay. If you ever thought, oh my goodness, when I'm actually trying to run to the office, I'm late for a meeting, I need to join the meeting from anywhere, we can join via WebEx basically from deep space, from inside your Ford, from your home, anywhere you need to be, you stay connected no matter where you are with the power of WebEx, basically. Uh, and I think right now we're gonna go back to Rob, is that what we're doing? Or am I going to Alex? I'm sorry, <laughs> this is live, no, so I'm gonna be going back. Oh, I'm please. sorry, we're gonna go back to Alex. Nope, I think we're coming back to Rob. Oh, I'm sorry, we are going back to yeah, Rob. Sorry, no, I was I'm... guessing. It's a live show. I apologize. <laughs> Annie, this is the fun part. <laughs> Annie, this is the fun part. I hope you can hear me right now. I you can. did fantastic. There's no reason to think twice about it. This is fun. I love watching you walk around and try to figure it out, and I love that Mustang. <laughs> so keep it up. I love it. Good work. All right, guys, we are moving on. I want to check in with social media just a little bit, see what you guys are saying out there. And Lauren, I know you've been tracking some of this. Have you got any social media updates that we should be aware of? Yes, I do, and I was I was pretending to be oh pretending God. to be you for a moment there. It was pretty cool, had the cool factor. But yes, I have a great tweet mm -hmm. from okay. Show IP Int Brief. I think that's what he was going for, which I love. Super creative. I had such an amazing time at the Cisco Live tweet up today. Oh, that's right. There was that's a exactly tweet up. what my yeah, soul needed. Yeah, there was a bunch needed. of gatherings and stuff. Yeah. Oh, my soul needed. He said it was for the soul needed. He said okay. he's oh. even. Happy to see everyone in person again. And if you didn't, if you didn't get a chance to talk to him, he said that he's going to be around. I guess he wants to keep the conversations going. So yeah. shout out to Tony at Show IP Int Brief for that. Well, let me just remind you guys that the way to stay involved is, of course, use a hashtag Cisco Live. I want you to hop on there. Make sure you're getting everything you need out of this. Uh, so whether you're doing this remotely or you happen to be watching us here or you're laying around in your hotel room and you have yet to come down to the show floor, shame on you. You made the trip. <laughs> Let's get down here and do some learning. And we are here to interact with humans. That's what yes. this show is all about. Yes. But it doesn't matter if you're here or not. We still need the interaction because this is what drives us. This is what's going to take us forward. Um, yes, it is. And that's a key theme with everything we're doing here. And I think it's a key theme with how do we keep the humanity in the hybrid work? How do we keep hybrid work from becoming a chore? It's not a chore, it's an enabler. Mm -hmm. Because the office is still very important, but as I learned from Eric earlier, the notion of hybrid work is that we go into work, if we're doing it at the office, we do it to meet with others, to collaborate, to build and go further, right? Yes, that absolutely. is absolutely right. I, I have to say it again, guys. Hashtag Cisco Live. Hashtag Cisco Live. Hashtag, <coughs> Hashtag Cisco, Cisco Live. Live. I want to read your tweet next. All right, fantastic. Well, guys, it's time to move on to our next. We have our innovation talk, and I'm pleased. We got, this is really a cool. We're talking about sustainability with Alok Sharma. All right, so let's take a look at Alok Sharma with COP26. Understand what Cisco's doing to support sustainability right now. Sustainability is an area where we all need to work together to achieve the change the planet desperately needs. COP26 in 2021 embodied this sentiment as nearly 200 nations came together with the shared goal of achieving greater sustainability and reducing our environmental impact. 
Cisco partnered with COP26 COP to provide the technology that connected both on-site and virtual delegates with WebEx. This is an urgent global priority and global collaboration is vital. Leading this effort is Alok Sharma, President of COP, the United Nations Climate Change Conference. His role as COP President saw him lead negotiations at COP26, which took place in Glasgow, Scotland in November of 2021. A Member of Parliament of the United Kingdom since 2010, he also chairs the UK's Government Climate Action Implementation Cabinet Committee to coordinate government action towards net zero by 2050. Leading the conversation today with Alok is Denise Lee, Vice President of Engineering Sustainability Office with Cisco. Please welcome Alok Sharma and Denise Lee as they discuss this critical topic today. Well, thank you, uh, Wendy and Denise, uh, and uh, could I just uh, thank you all